Well, let's talk about the Lib Dems then. How do you select your candidates? Democratic plebiscite. Thank you very much. Yes, we've uh, we had a vote. We had a vote. We, we, we actually had, had 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 to have two. Uh, but we had a vote for, uh, it, well, that was the first time it had been trialled in New South Wales, and so I was very happy to be endorsed by the membership. And, uh, yeah, the other state divisions, I think, have been looking on with interest, and I think it's a very successful process. So, yeah, looks like we won, so the, the members' member decision looks like it was they justified. Oh, well done, yes. Well, the, one of the things that I love about your party is the Freedom Manifesto. It calls for, among other things, an end to COVID alarmism, expensive renewable energy, compulsory superannuation and centralised education. How are these ideas taken? How, how do these go down in the electorate while you were campaigning? OK, so we pretty much had the entire corporate media absolutely ignored us. They could not stop talking about Mark Latham. OK, now Mark Latham got a few more votes than us, but not that many more. OK, we had to get our message out through good old social media and talking to people like yourself and, you know, podcasters and YouTube people. But, you know, the corporate media, they didn't attack us. They didn't help us. They didn't take any interest in us. And we're still looking like we've got a pretty good result. So I think what's happened is the Freedom Manifesto has got around and through word of mouth, people have said, check these guys out. OK, so, uh, I mean, I, I joined the Liberal Democrats almost two years ago, and that was because I had come to the view that the Liberal Party is bankrupt, cannot be reformed because of three great sins. There was the COVID extremism, there was a sellout on net zero carbon, and there was the debt, the trillion dollar debt. Thanks, Libs. OK, so then I thought maybe we could forgive one of them. Probably not, but <laughs> three out of three, three strikes and you're out. So I joined the Liberal Democrats. Now, it's a smaller party, but I can absolutely tell you the average Liberal Democrat is about 57 times more intellectual and smarter than the average Liberal Party member. OK, <laughs> it's a party full of brainy people. OK, and really good people. And the Liberal Democrats have got nothing, to, no perks to hand out, no staffing jobs, no um, lobbying contracts or anything, not much prestige. Gets true believers in there, okay? And, so and these, are, am, these are people we, uh, who've, who've lived outside politics as well. They bring real experience to the job. I mean, you, but you've looks like you've got yourself into the upper house. We won't confirm it tonight, but maybe later in the week. You had 13 lower house candidates who didn't get very close. Some of them almost made it into double figure percentage in the primary vote. What's your takeaway from this election? I know you're the, you know, you're... You're the little guy. You didn't have a, a huge amount of money. But what's your takeaway from it? How are you going to build off this? Oh, well, look, we're hoping to have a platform in the parliament. OK, we're hoping that we can sort of uh, we're hoping that the liberal that there's a, a one of the races for one of the, the last position is, is shaping up to be a contest between the seventh liberal and the animal justice candidate. Now, if that we want very much want the liberal to get elected, because if the animal justice person gets up, then it means that Labor slash Greens slash Animal Justice will have an upper house majority. If the Liberal gets up, they won't have an upper house majority. So we would then hopefully be able to use that opportunity to say, well, look, you know, we basically just support in reducing the size of the government. So in addition to the parliamentary sort of platform, we want to be able to use this opportunity to grow the movement, to grow the, I think when people find out about libertarianism, about the benefits of small government, people get persuaded by it quite quickly. I would say, Fred, that across the whole of New South Wales, 10% of people have heard of the Liberal Democrats. Now, a third of those people that have heard of us have voted for us. So all we've got to do is get that uh, name recognition up, which, you know, hopefully having a parliamentarian, if we do, that, that will help that. If we can get the name recognition up, and then I think so many people have lost all faith in the Liberal Party, I think we can really grow the Liberal Democrats.